What is going on, everybody? It is March 28th. We've got a Wednesday slate. And uh, we've got eight games, and there's a ton of solid value again. Uh, feels really similar to last night in that we have a lot of news already. Hoping that it's kind of tame as we get to uh, closer to lock. But it should be good. Last night was really, really good for me. Um, I had an exceptional night, so I am ready to, to dive back in here on this last day uh, before baseball. So uh, let's just get to it. Uh, first game up on the slate, uh, the Charlotte Hornets hosting the Cleveland Cavaliers. Uh, Hornets, one and a half point underdogs at home. They have the third highest implied total. There were a couple lines that weren't out yet, but this one happens to be one that was. Um, so let's take that look now. I've already ruined this. There we go, back in business. So, Hornets. You know, solid matchup. Uh, Cavs are bad on D. So... Definitely want to take a closer look. I don't love the Kemba price when it's you know above 8,500. I think it's hard to return a ton of value, even with uh, you know the two 50-point games that he's had in this last two-week stretch. Hmm, I'm fine with it. Um, I'll probably have a little bit of him. But it's not something that I go uh, crazy for. I'd feel pretty good about having Kemba in cash. Um, there shouldn't be much of an impediment there. Uh, Dwight Howard, 8,700 on FanDuel. 8,600 on DK. I mean, he should eat. Uh, it's possible that Love is out. So it would just be a bunch of Nants. Um, I don't think that Tristan Thompson is in any position to get really big minutes. Uh, so I think Dwight looks pretty good. Um, again, good matchup for him. No reason to to think otherwise. Put up 50 uh, a couple games ago. Went for 63 on March 21st. So uh, no problems having a, a solid amount of Dwight. I think this is a really good spot for him. I don't really want to trust Batum too much uh, coming back off of that Achilles injury. At 6,500, you need a pretty solid night. I, I think that he's going to take a little bit to get back into the flow. Um, so, you know, he, he looks relatively average to me. If he pops up, I won't be mad about it, but I don't expect to see a ton of him. Um, and then I think you could probably fill in a little bit with Marvin Williams if need be, or MKG in a GPP, but um, there's not too much else that I'm really interested in here. I think Dwight would be my main focus coming out of the Hornets. Now the Cavs, 115.5 uh, implied total, which is second. Um, not the best matchup in the world. Uh, Hornets are still solid on D. They're a smart team. Um, so we get Braun at 12.5 on FanDuel, 11.6 on DK. You know, back to back after playing Miami last night, then going to Charlotte tonight. Um, I don't see it. Um, Twelve five is just a lot of freight for me to pay, so I can't imagine uh, Braun is going to be the direction I would go for spending a ton of cash. I would, I would guess that he's going to have a relatively low ownership for me. Uh, I have Kevin Love in right now, although he was exhibiting um, some concussion symptoms, so you definitely want to keep an eye on that. But at 8,100, um, I'm not really uh, interested in having a ton of Kevin Love one way or the other. Um, so hopefully we get that news relatively early, maybe around shoot-around, but it could be it could be a little later than that. They might not have a shoot-around with the back-to-back, -back, so we might not get that uh, Kevin Love news till closer to lock, unless he's just unless it's just a very big problem for him. Um, yeah, I don't... It, I'm having a hard time finding anything of interest in Cleveland. The George Hill, Rodney Hood, Jeff Green, Jordan Clarkson, sort of, you know, Larry Nance to a degree. All of these guys are... There's not a ton of upside in any of them. Um, they're all just sort of GPP flyer type plays. I... You know, like Jordan Clarkson hasn't had a game over 20 since the 17th of March. 
you know, Hood can be anywhere from 14 to 30 just in his last three games. So it's tough to be confident about anything that's going on um, on the Cavs. So I don't really like much of anything. I'll, I'll likely have very little ownership across the board for the Cavs. Now for the Magic, uh, hosting the Brooklyn Nets, Nets one and a half point favorites in Orlando, which is just... Just, just super fun. Um, Magic have a great matchup. Uh, you could say best matchup against point guards, third best matchup for power forwards, best matchup against centers. So I definitely want to dig in here a little bit. Aaron Gordon is at 8,000, coming off the 63-point game uh, four nights ago. Three nights ago? Four nights ago? The 24th? Whatever. Um, I don't love the price as much on DK. $300 more expensive, but... Uh, I absolutely like Aaron Gordon at that price. Um, I think that he's certainly worth a flyer in a game like this. He's going to want to go out and you know have a big game, still heading into restricted free agency. So the stuff still matters for him. Um, I would imagine he'll be relatively highly owned just for the matchup, and you know his price point isn't ridiculous. Now from Vooch, eighty-seven hundred on Fanduel. 7,800 on DK. He looks much better on DraftKings than he does on FanDuel. Um, I like him, but 8,700 is tough. I mean, you need... He he went for 45 in his last game out, uh, and you need every bit of that to get to value. Um, I don't see an overwhelming amount of upside in Vooch's uh, price on FanDuel, but I'll still have a little bit of him because of the matchup and how good it is. And then uh, after that, I mean, most of these guys look a little bit better on DK than they do on FanDuel. I think that you could have a little bit of DJ Augustine on DraftKings. I won't have a ton of him on FanDuel. Um, I think you could have a little bit of Hazonia at 5,300. I won't have a ton of him on FanDuel, but he's a little bit better of a filler just because of his position. But for me, uh, Aaron Gordon is the guy that I'm trying to pay attention to most today. Uh, the Nets 109 implied total is seventh. They are one and a half point favorites in Orlando, and uh, they've got an okay matchup. Second best for point guards, uh, fourth best matchup for small forwards. Um, there's a couple value spots here that we should take a look at. Specifically, um, D'Angelo Russell is 6300 on DraftKings. I think that's a really really nice price for him. He went for 51. Uh, two games ago so has the ability to ramp it up also has a 45 point game in his last little two week stretch speaking of that two week stretch i should refilter that because that's way too big now there we go still that 45 point game in his last two weeks though um you know multiple 30 plus point games so i think that he's a relatively safe play on DraftKings, and there's definitely enough upside in that price point uh that you know you can use him in both games I'll likely have an average amount of Rondé Hollis-Jefferson, average amount of Damari Carroll. Um, I'll have a little tiny bit of Jared Allen uh, as a flyer. I won't go too crazy there just because of the matchup. I I don't really like Brooklyn. You know, Joe Harris went for 43 in their last game in 27 minutes. Someone can get hot. Um, It's just hard to, you know pinpoint anybody when everybody gets such similar chunks of minutes so um, everybody that I see on FanDuel is nothing more than just uh, filler guys nobody with any sort of high ownership on my end now the Sixers 116.5 implied total is first they are 11 and a half point nope they are 12 and a half point favorites uh, at home against the Knicks as they should be um, this should be a beating. Um, we've got Ben Simmons at 9,800, 9,300 on DK. Not the biggest fan of him again tonight. He got the fact that he got to 41 fantasy points um, two nights ago is is amazing because he was playing atrocious for three quarters. Um, but at that price point, I mean, you need 50 just to be happy. Um, um, it's, it's not one for me. 
uh, I will likely have little to no Ben Simmons. Uh, Embiid, 10-2 on FanDuel, 9,400 on DK. I think he looks much better. Although, has been, you know, a week plus since he's been up in the 50s. So again, I don't see necessarily crazy, crazy upside, but I think that Embiid feels a little bit safer than Simmons tonight. Ooh, coffee break. Dario Saric, um, you know, he's just constantly in the high 20s uh, and at a $6,300 price point on FanDuel, $6,200 price point on DK. It's it's not somebody that I'm actively seeking out. Um, same sort of thing for Covington, although, let's see, one, two, three, four, five games in the 30s never gets really too crazy. Um, I'll have a little bit of them again, just sort of because of position. It's it's always harder to find small forward value than anywhere else on the board, in my opinion. So he'll likely be owned a little bit more than uh, I would traditionally have him. But for me, it's a little bit of focus on Embiid, and um, that's probably it. I just don't really love the pricing on Fanduel, and it's all about sort of maximizing that. Uh, I just I think that everybody is just slightly overpriced for where they've been, and um, that makes it a little tricky for me. Now we've got the Knicks. Ugh. Man, they're bad. Twelve and a half point underdogs in Philly. They have the twelfth highest implied total on the night. Uh, without question, the most difficult defensive matchup. Three positions: point guard, small forward, and center will be dead last. Power forward, second worst. Um, I can't imagine wanting much of anything here. Uh, a flyer on Tim Hardaway is always reasonable just because of how much he shoots. If he gets hot, you know, he can get to that value mark. Um, Trey Burke coming off of his ridiculous 62-point fantasy game. Um, I think that he's still in play slightly, but if Moutier is back, which is what I'm expecting, and with the way that uh, the Sixers defend the point guard position... I think that it's a lot more likely to see Trey Burke put up a dud than a monster game. If Kylo Quinn is playing, I think that you can sneak him into some lineups as a bit of a center punt. 5,000 on FanDuel, 4,200 on DK. I, I would entertain something like that if you know that he's in. But otherwise, you're looking at a game where the Knicks are really up against it defensively. And it's... It's just not the best spot to have anybody. There's a ton of value elsewhere. I have that Memphis Grizzlies line in there wrong because they're certainly not seven-point favorites against Portland. This line does not exist because of uh, the lack of Dame tonight. It looks a little bit better. I've got it in as Blazers favored by seven in Memphis, um, but you know that's something that I'll update as we go along. Let's start with Memphis. A uh, relatively average matchup for them. Um, assuming that uh, Tyreek Evans doesn't play. But, you know, keep an eye on it. We don't really have a, any sort of idea what news is going to come out of Memphis at this point. They just sort of do whatever they want to do. And it's just a skosh frustrating. Um, Andrew Harrison, 5,500 on FanDuel, 5,400 on DK. I think that's passable. Um, I'll probably have a little bit of him. That's pretty good uh, filler salary, a little bit below average, so no issues there. Uh, no issues with Jamichael Green, 6,100 and 5,600. Um, Marc Gasol at 8,200 on FanDuel is probably a little pricey for me, but you know, I'll probably have a few lineups with him in. Um, I rarely like Dylan Brooks because I think his upside is so limited, but at 3,700 on FanDuel, um, sometimes you just need value plays that'll get minutes. So I'll have, you know, an, I'll probably be relatively average to the field for most of these guys, but I think Harrison, Green, Brooks, Jarrell Martin, they're all passable. Um... Marc Gasol, I'm a little bit less enthused for. 
I like him a little bit more on DraftKings than I do on FanDuel just because of the positional flexibility. Um, but yeah, I, I don't necessarily have a huge problem taking anybody from Memphis tonight. Nobody that I'm seeking out or anything, but I don't see anybody on there that's like a major red flag. Now, for Portland, uh, like I said, Dame Lillard, uh, fresh off the 72.8 point FanDuel game last night in which I had 70% of him. Whoop, whoop. Uh, he will not be playing tonight due to the likely birth of his child. I know that his partner is in labor right now. I don't know if the baby has been born or not yet. So he will not be there. He flew out after the game last night, which means we get a bundle of value here. Um, CJ McCollum, 7,800 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. I did not give him the Dame's Not Playing boost yet, so let's hit that right now. Shabam. Shouldn't have said shabam when Excel was going to take uh, multiple seconds to do that. But anyway, uh, obviously I like CJ a good bit. Um, nothing to worry about too much from Memphis. Um, CJ's probably going to be pretty popular. Um I'll probably be around average on him just because I think there's value in other places that'll bring him down from me. Uh, specifically, we'll look at Evan Turner, 3,600 on FanDuel, 3,600 on DraftKings. Uh, he should be in line for 30 plus minutes, and at that price, you, you basically have to have him. Um, he'll show up an overwhelming amount of time in the optimizer for sure. Uh, Aminu at 6,500. Um, I probably won't really have any of him. I know he's been playing pretty well. A couple 40-point games in a row. Um, he's really, really upped his game, but uh, I'll likely be very light on Aminu. I'll be very heavy on Shabazz Napier. Also should get, you know, 30 minutes or so. Minimum salary on FanDuel, 3,800 on DK. Just in an absolute smash spot from for value uh, for the Blazers with Lillard out. And then finally, Nurkic, who I had an overwhelming amount of last night, put up 46 fantasy points, back-to-back 40-point games. He had a 54-point game uh, about a week ago. He's at 6,900 on FanDuel, 6,400 on DK. Um, he will likely be my most owned center. Um, I don't want to speak before I get to everything else here, but I would imagine that Nurkic will will be uh, very highly owned for me. So lots of stacking going on for Portland. They are going to be a large part of my um, a part of my lines tonight. Minnesota Timberwolves uh, hosting the Hawks. 113.5 implied total is fourth for the Wolves. They're 11 point favorites at home against the Hawks. If you saw the video, I retweeted it a little bit earlier, but if you saw anything uh, regarding Ben Simmons and um, Towns playing video games last night, uh, Ben Simmons was trying to get Towns to, to at least play another game with him. <laughs> and Simmons asked uh, Towns who they play tonight, and uh, Towns was like, we got the Hawks. Ben Simmons let him know that he had uh, plenty of time to keep playing video games since he was playing the Hawks, which I find hilarious. Just dogging the Hawks on a live stream is absolutely amazing. So, speaking of said Bla or of the Timberwolves, we've got Towns at 10-8 on FanDuel, 9,500 on DK. Uh, he's going to be very highly owned on DraftKings, in my opinion. That's an absolutely great spot for him. Uh, 9,500 is a, just a really good price point there for a guy that can be putting up, you know, mid-50s production. Um, I'll have a solid amount of him. I prefer Nurkic just in an overall grand scheme, but I think the Towns is still a really good value. Uh, Wiggins at 7,000, 6,800 on DK. Uh, he'll just be, he's like just another guy at shooting guard for me. I'll, I'll have a bit of him. I won't go crazy. Not somebody that I'm really going nuts over. Nobody really here is. Um, they're all just sort of perfect filler guys for me. Um, I'll have a, a little bit of Teague. I'll have a little bit of Bielitsa. I'll have a little bit of Taj Gibson. Um, 
Now that Jamal Crawford's salary is up over four on FanDuel, I'm a little less interested, but he still works as a, a GPP punt play at shooting guard. But it's hard not to at least want to use a lot of uh, guys from Minnesota. Prices are fine, and you know they've got a pretty tasty matchup against Atlanta, so... I have no qualms grabbing anybody uh, that gets any serious minutes for the for the Wolves. Why did I type Hawks? That's stupid. All right. Uh, for the Hawks, 102.5 implied total, 13th, 11-point underdogs uh, in Minnesota. No Dennis Schroeder tonight, uh, so that would mean a benefit for Isaiah Taylor. Uh, Taylor got 32 minutes in the last game with Schroeder out. I would put up 32 fantasy points. I would expect uh, similar minutes tonight. I wouldn't necessarily expect similar production. I've got him projected for 25 fantasy points, but when you're getting that at $3,600 salary or $3,800 on DK, uh, he's a really he's a big time value play um, at point guard tonight. Uh, Torian Prince. You know, boom or bust, as far as I'm concerned. At 7,500, I don't love the price point. Um, he's just not really catching up to that salary, in my opinion. I know that his production has been solid, but 41 here, 38 here, both of those are right at and around his value mark. But back to back 20 point games is tough. If you want to use him, it's got to be in the GPP. Uh, Damian Lee, another solid value play at 3,700 on FanDuel. Um, you know, he's rolled it up 23, 28. Uh, it's a little risky, but I don't mind it in, in GPPs for value. I think John Collins is in play at uh, 5,800 on FanDuel, 5,100 on DK. Just a lot of guys that are, that are priced pretty well. I'm going to have solid amounts of Taylor, Lee, Collins, Deadman, um, Muscala. Like I don't, I don't really mind having any of those guys, um, because I think they have the ability to provide a little bit of value. You know, Muscala got to twenty six point nine fantasy points on the twenty third. I'd be okay with that at forty one hundred. Lots of guys on the Hawks are going to allow you to fit stuff in, and I don't necessarily hate them as much, knowing. Because Minnesota's defense is just so different when Jimmy Butler's not on the floor. So I'm willing to take flyers on a lot of these guys. They really, the Hawks and the Blazers are really going to allow you to build out lineups however you see fit. Jazz, 100.5 implied total is 14th. They are six and a half point favorites at home uh, against the Celtics. Um, tough matchup. Boston's still solid on D, even with. You know, the laundry list of injuries that they have. Uh, Donovan Mitchell, 7,900 on FanDuel, 7,500 on DK. Thinks he looks like a, a perfectly solid play. He's the guy that's usually in the high 30s, low 40s. Uh, feels pretty relatively safe for cash. Um, I'll have a, a decent amount of him. Rudy Gobert, 8,900 on FanDuel, 7,700 on DK. Uh, coming off a 50 point game, multiple mid 40s games. Um, wouldn't be my favorite play in the world. You know, I think uh, Boston's pretty solid on the interior. Um, so I'd I'd probably find a different night to use Gobert. Not big on Ingles. Um, although multiple games in the 30s, I'm just not going to uh, to make that move. It's not it for me. Little bits of uh, Rubio and Favors will probably pop up, but Mitchell's probably the only guy that I'll have any solid ownership for. Now the Celtics, eek, 94 point implied total, dead last by a country mile. It's, what, six full points below the Grizzlies, and the Grizzlies are at home. It's not good. It's not good at all. Um, as you could tell by all those grades, this looks like a titty bar with all these D's. Ooh, that's a bad joke. It's such a bad joke. Um, I don't really want much of anything. If you want to take a flyer on like Greg Monroe on FanDuel, feel free. 
if you want to take a flyer on Horford on DK, feel free. But I'm not trying to run um, on anybody from Boston, that Utah defensive juggernaut. Phoenix Suns hosting the Clippers. I have the Suns as five-point underdogs at home against the Clippers. Um, not a bad matchup, actually, for the Suns, but right now I'm assuming that Booker and TJ Warren are not going to play again. Uh, if we get any news of the contrary, I'll make some updates. But Josh Jackson at 7,500 on FanDuel, 7,100 on DK. Dude's going to be gunning, that's for sure. Um, four, straight game, four straight games in the mid-30s. Uh, you'd like a little bit more from that, but... You know, I think he's a, a relatively solid value play. Or a value play. What am I talking about? I think he's a solid play tonight. Uh, I won't do backflips for him, but I'm going to have a solid amount of him. Um, probably a little bit higher than average, if I had to guess, just based on position and stuff. Not a big fan of Bender. Um, he's only worth flyers and GPPs. Um, you can use Troy Daniels as a value play. Um, Alfred Payton, I don't really trust. Played 15 minutes in the last game. Tyler Eulis seems to be the one getting the minutes again. Um, it's just, I don't really understand what Phoenix is doing at this point. I mean, I, I guess the answer is tanking uh, very aggressively. So, you know, you can you can roll dice on Daniels or Payton or Chris or Eulis, um, but... Don't feel confident about any of these guys. I wouldn't really trust anybody here in cash outside of maybe Josh Jackson, who I think is the only one that'll be sort of guaranteed the playing time and the shots that he normally gets. Um, but I don't want to go too crazy on Phoenix. I'll probably try to depress their value a little bit moving forward. Now the Clippers, five-point favorites in Phoenix, uh, fifth-highest implied total at 112. Um, exceptional matchup. Suns are terrible on D. Um, no Taya Dosich. Uh, plantar fasciitis or some sort of foot issue is not helping him at all. So lots to like um, for the Clippers. Uh, Austin Rivers looks like he's in a really good spot. I'll have some of him. Tobias Harris looks like he's in a really good spot. I'll have some of him. Uh, I always love Lou Will, so I have no problems grabbing some of him particularly coming off the 24-point game uh, last night. Uh, no problem running him right back against the Suns. Uh, DeAndre should absolutely eat. 7,900 on FanDuel. Uh, between him and Nurkic, they're going to get a lot of my center exposure tonight. Uh, he's not as good on DK, but he's still at a really good price. Um, there's nobody on the Clippers that's going to check him. You know, Len is a little banged up. No Chandler. You know, Alan Williams and uh, and Bender don't exactly have the structure to, to mess around with DeAndre all that much. And then uh, Tyrone Wallace, uh, now that he is back up with the D-League season over, he might see some increased minutes. I've got him for 24. Um, could be worth a, uh, a punt playing a GPP at minimum salary on both sides. And finally, we get to the Lakers hosting the Dallas Mavericks. Lakers, uh, 110 implied total is sixth. They are six-point favorites at home against the Mavs. Um, Brandon Ingram actually questionable for this game, which would be really nice to get another guy back there. Um, Lakers have been running incredibly thin, so to get another 30-minute-a-game guy back in the lineup would really take a little bit off of the rest of the crew. Um, they're not the same sort of value plays that they had been over the past couple of games, but you know I'd be okay having some Lonzo. I'm a little less interested in KCP if Ingram is back. Um, I think that Julius Randle is still in play. Four straight games in the 30s, so it's a little interesting that his price point is still 8,500. I would be a little bit muted on that, um, but I'd be willing to entertain it. Uh, you know, due to Ingram providing a little bit extra spacing. Um, uh, there's not anybody on the Lakers that I'm going to absolutely slam tonight. Although Ingram kind of is in that range if he can play, and we get a, an idea of his minutes. But 
I think most of the Lakers guys look like really good filler. Be happy to see them, you know, sprinkled all over my lineups. Finally, we've got the Mavs. The Mavs have a 104 implied total, which is 12th. It'll be six point underdogs in LA. Um, pretty solid matchup for them. I think that uh, Dennis Smith on DraftKings looks great. Uh, 6,500 on on uh, on DraftKings is an amazing price. 7,500 is a little bit trickier. Um, really, for me, Smith and Barnes are the only guys that I'd be looking at. Um, other than that, I, they're not really in any position that to wow me. Yogi Ferrell getting a little bit less minutes lately. Still no JJ Barea, so Smith and Barnes are the only guys on my radar. Now, the part that I'm looking forward to the most, I want to see what these lineups look like. I'm really anxious to see how much value gets jammed in and uh, the way that the, the studs sort of shake out. Top Hundy is there. I think that I need to safely grab Napier and Turner. I'm going to wait on Isaiah. Um, center, Nurkic is here. DeAndre there. So I'm going to let that go for a second. Let's take a closer look at Aaron Gordon. That gives me 12 lineups. I'm going to take a look at Lou. What does the Nurkic lineup look like? Teague, Napier. Yeah, I'd be interested in that if we knew that uh, Brandon Ingram was playing. I'd have no problem running that out. Um, if we look at DeAndre. Mm, it leads me to LeBron basically because there's too much value out there, which I think is really interesting. Um, if I go to Nurkic and walk back off of, man, I don't really know, Aaron Gordon, I guess? Where do we end up? Yeah, like I would entertain something like that as well, but a lot of this is gonna end up with LeBron. Um, fifty percent. Yeah. So, you know, this is a, a good example of the way someone might look statistically compared to roster construction because of only having the ability to have strict roster construction on FanDuel. Um, someone like LeBron James becomes significantly higher owned just because of the value that's out there. I didn't necessarily think that he looked good on paper, but he's going to pop up a lot in my optimizer. I'm going to have more LeBron than I expected. So, interesting. Didn't see that coming. I thought it would distribute elsewhere, but that's a uh, that's small forward for you. Like, I wouldn't, I'd expect it to be a lot different here on DK because of the flexibility. You can fit other things in. All right, we'll pop this junk in here and we'll let her rip. Ooh, still a bunch of LeBron so far. Much more muted though. Especially, you know, <clears throat> with Embiid and Towns being, and even Nurkic being such good values, you can fit all those centers in it. It opens things up dramatically. So if I look at uh, my projections for DK, I want to grab Nurkic first. I want to grab Napier. Let's say I grab Isaiah Turner. Or Isaiah Taylor, rather. I was thinking about Evan Turner. Um, we want to get Towns. 
So you can get to Towns and LeBron if you want to. So let's look at those four. Yeah, I mean, I really wouldn't have much of a problem with any of these. Taylor Turner, Jermichael Green, LeBron, Nurkic, Napier, Ingram, Towns. I, I like that lineup a lot. I like everything that I'm looking at right now. I'm not the biggest Trey Burke fan in the world, so I would probably try to go, you know, I'd limit that a little bit. But if I'm playing a ton of lines, it's a little bit different. But you can get to some really interesting stuff tonight. It's going to be a fun night. Um, that's it for me. Um, you'll be seeing this video. You've, we, I probably should have did the, done this intro to start. Um, this will be the first of my videos going to the awesomeo.com uh, YouTube channel. Um, RIP to my former Josh Engelman YouTube channel, but content is uh, moving. So, yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, I'm, I'm really pumped for tonight. It's a great set of games. It's a great set of value, um, and it's our last uh, baseball-free basketball night. So starting tomorrow, it all gets really crazy. Uh, I'll be around all day, so feel free to hit me up in the comments section or on Twitter. Uh, handle is at Josh Engelman. Surprise, surprise there. But uh, come out, enjoy. Uh, check out awesomeo.com for um, his... Uh, projections and rankings or well rankings throughout the day ownership percentages slam dunks articles um, we've got a ton of stuff coming out for baseball in the near future so check us out uh, and best of luck tonight enjoy <laughs>